So we had something bad happen. Yeah, I, I don't know if I should call it bad. We we had something happen. And that that something was the roster update. And I I don't I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know if it was good or bad cuz well, let's let's start with the good. The good is that we had two pitchers, two starting pitchers go diamond in the update. Both Carlos Rodon and Shohei got the upgrade to the diamond. Which really is huge, because as we keep going forward, our pitching is going to need to get better. So we went from only having two diamond starters to now only having one spot left for a diamond in the rotation. There was more good, though. Gary went back up to a silver, so at least he's not a bronze anymore. He got a massive boost to his contact, which is what I cared about most, really. Yuli also got a bit of an upgrade. He went up from an 86 to an 87. And Matt Olson continues his trend of going up by like two overall every update. I think he started at an 81 and he's gone up by two every time. But now he's an 89 and he's a beast. But guys, this is the bad. What happened to Trevor Story and Yelich? Both of them lost their diamond status. Honestly, just like face value though, it doesn't look like Trevor Story got a whole lot worse. Actually, just looking at his card here, I, I don't even remember what got knocked down for him to become an 83. Okay, it was it was pretty much all to his lefties. But the the big one, I, I knew it was coming. I didn't know it was happening this severely though. Yelich all the way down to an 81, that just does not feel right. And I mean, he already took a massive hit when he went from, what was he, an 88 down to an 85? Like even at that point, his hitting dropped down far enough to make me think he might be the next one out if we got a better outfielder. But now, it got even worse. Now they, they only consider him a silver hitting tier. So... I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what I want to do with them, because here's the thing. Upgrades from the last episode. They only made the bench, but Grichik, I said, would be replacing Lord S as our righty bench bat, or one of our righty bench bats. Then we also pulled Verdugo, and I wasn't sure if I should replace Hap with him just straight up, but after seeing that Yelich downgrade, there's, there's part of me thinking, I might just start Verdugo over Yelich. So that, that's why I left Verdugo on the team for now, because after this game, I might put Verdugo in the starting lineup in center and have Yelich be our bench bat. Because Yelich is playing this game, because pretty much no matter what, he's getting to parallel two in this game. So we'll, we'll get that, we'll get our 2,000 stubs as a reward for getting a player to parallel two, but after that, I might take the fielding. If Yelich's bat is not going to be as insane as it was, it might be more valuable to have Verdugo with his fielding out there in center than Yelich. Uh, but then there's a, a few other minor minor changes from the roster update, I think all on the pitching side. I think Nola went down one. I think Gallegos, did he go up from an 83 to an 84 in this one? I think he did. And then Chapman went down from an 87 to an 86. And then I, uh, we also had Chris Martin here drop down from a gold. So I took him out since we pulled Karen Chak in that last one. So yeah, I mean, now you probably get what I said where I don't really know if this was a good thing or a bad thing. Cause like Olsen, Gary, Yuli, they all got better. We added two diamond pitchers, but Yelich and Story, those are two pretty big ones. And I completely forgot to mention the bad thing about Story too, is if you remember back earlier in this series, I had Marcus Simeon at short. That was all the way back when he was a silver. And then we pulled Story, so I replaced Simeon with Story. But now in that update, that last roster update, Simeon went diamond and Story dropped down. So I would have been better off just keeping Simeon on the team. But anyway, we got we got a game to play today, and it's actually kind of a big one because we're currently back on a winning streak. We're at a four-game winning streak, so if we pick up another win, we get an extra 5,000 stubs for having a five-win streak. So Kershaw is going to get the ball today. He's got an inside edge taking him up to 90, and he's at full energy. So honestly, I guess there's a chance, too, that he gets to parallel, too. So 
If he gets it, Yelich gets it. Olsen's also relatively close. He'd have to have a big game. But if he gets it too, and, and we win the game, that's, man, that's what, 11,000 stubs right off the bat before even any stats? This could end up being a pretty big episode. I, uh, I'm really hoping we face a lefty. We had a lot of inside edges going up against lefties. Who is it? Oh, it, it's Crochet. I actually don't know if I've faced this Crochet yet, which is surprising because he's been out for a while now. I just realized, how did I leave it at daytime? I don't like to play in the daytime at a non-created field. I actually didn't really see the entire rest of his team other than Crochet, but he's got his ball player and he's turning on a fastball. Oh, he's going to get on with that though. He is, uh, he's swinging though. This guy is swinging, so I might throw a lot more out of the zone. Yeah, that was a slider out of the zone. He swung. And we get out of the first pretty easy there. We're going to lead it off with a BGO single. I feel like he doesn't do that as often as he should. Wow, okay. that I guess that's the new Yelich, huh? That's got to drop, please. Thank you. Oh, yeah. No, yep, I definitely missed that. I was all geared up for the up and in fastball and a 2 0 count, and I just missed it. Story? He's still gonna get the job done. I think we're gonna be able to move up to third, also. Yeah. Hey, he lost all of his stuff basically against lefties, and he still gets the RBI single. Olsen? That ball's gotta carry. Help me out here. Oh, it did! Matt Olson, dead center. I like his upgrade. That's his sixth homer for the team, taking an early four nothing lead. This is this is going well. Oh, and Gary, I blew it. He's got 115 power today against lefties, and I blew it. All right, we just gotta hope now that he doesn't quit too early. Oh, well, this guy was ready for the 12-6. That was the first time I threw it. Usually people are way out in front the first time. Yeah, I, I just, I gotta remember this guy's just swinging. I'm just gonna, yeah. He's not getting strikes. Yeah, you can have whatever timing you want on that pitch. You're never gonna hit it. And we get the pop-up from Abreu. He worked that, that count to three balls. Three and one at one point. And the grounder, I kind of left that one there. Maybe a little lucky he didn't do more with it. Yuli with the leadoff hit. I should have hit that one better, if I'm being honest. Did we fluke him? We fluked him. Oh, we fluked him big time. I don't, I'm not going to risk it going home. Well, that just sucks for him. No, did he quit? We're like frozen here. Did he dashboard after that? Ah, yeah, there he goes. Well, you know what? Maybe that was... That that actually might be better. Since we didn't make it to three innings, I'm gonna play a second game, so we're gonna get a chance to get even more stubs than I guess we would have gotten. We already... that That's gonna be an automatic 1,500 for the win, 1,500 for the quit, 5,000 for that being the five wins in a row. And then the rest of the stubs will just be whichever game between that last one and the next one we're about to play gives more stubs based on the stats. Oh my gosh, and I completely forgot to say too, two of the more important things I should be saying at the beginning of episodes. The first thing being we also got 7 likes on the last video, which turns into 700 stubs. I guess we're back stuck on 7 likes again though. But if you want to give me 100 stubs towards the next episode, you're gonna want to hit the like button because every like is worth 100 stubs. The second thing I forgot to mention is the, the stub bank. So after I sold everything that didn't make the team out of the packs in the last episode that added another 2319 which brought our stub bank total up to 10408 and there were the flash sales that went on back on uh, Friday which I didn't have enough stubs in the stub bank to actually get anything but let's get this second game going 
Oh, I didn't even realize we got Porcello back to full energy. So we're gonna get to use our ace. It didn't feel like I'm the home team based on the lag there. Is that even still a thing? Apparently not. We gotta face Crochet again. Hey, I'll run that back. I left it at daytime too because, I mean, it obviously worked. It also, again, I didn't really see the rest of his team, but I caught a bit of a glance. Looked like it wasn't too insane. Well, he's got a bit of an eye if he took that pitch, doesn't he? Oh, good pitch. Oh, we gotta spot that Rick, buddy. He's not swinging. That's gonna work. We don't need a strikeout on every at-bat. What are the chances this gets him on 0-2? Let's see what kind of eye he really has. He swung, made contact, but at least he's swinging at that. Yeah, this is what we're going to have to do. If he's not swinging at uh, pitches out of the zone, we're going to have to put it right on the corner and use his eye against him. I wish he would have swung at that, though. But that's exactly what I'm talking about, right on the corner. All right, let's start this off just like the last one, Craig. So this is parallel to Crochet, I think. So maybe he'll be a little tougher. Or not! <laughs> Starting things off with a perfect! Oh, and I swung first pitch with Yelich. I was... thought I was ready for that at least. Oh no, Eloy! Oh man. You're done! I don't think... yeah. Didn't need to swing at that, that was too far inside. I mean, I'm seeing him well to start, at least I think. I just couldn't put anything together that time in the first. Oh, that's nice. Jam him with that sinker. Maybe a curve gets him? It got him swinging at least. I have a feeling this guy is not going to strike out swinging too much though. Oh, I knew he was going to that. Please stay in! No! Oh, I was all over it. Another one? Are you kidding me? Just keep it fair, guys. Oh, he went two seam, and I didn't take it the other way. Well, at least Gary didn't uh, hit one foul just to tease me. Oh. Did not expect a swing on that, let alone a perfect. Oh, we're not going to recover. He gave me hope. Got to make this play. There we go. All right. That's what I was worried about, though. Even though he wasn't swinging well, anybody with a good eye, I feel like, can turn it on just like that. Look at Porcello. He walks up to the plate like he knows how, he, how to hit. <laughs> and then he does that. Biggio? We need some carry on that. That's gonna leave over that high wall. At least Biggio can do something. He's two for two and nobody else has a hit so far. Three for three in the episode as a whole. Yelich. Two roster updates ago, that might be leaving. Oh no, that's gonna, that's the fluke. That's the fluke, at least Eloy cut that down from bouncing over his head. How many jammed pop flies have I got this guy to do? There's another one. Alright, I'm feeling it with Eloy. He's gonna take one deep. See? Okay, what's happening now? Why am I late on the fastball all of a sudden? No, no. No, no. No, no. What the heck? I... I'm seeing Crochet so well. And then out of nowhere, he just throws an immaculate inning on me. Oh my god, how do you take that? How do you actually take that pitch on an 0-2 count? That did not end up where it was supposed to. There's another one. Man, can we like for one game only just transfer the strikeout stubs to jammed bloopers? That one's got to get run down. No flukes from the pitchers. I I don't know many things. But one thing I do know is this inning is not going like the last one. That's not happening again. See? I speak nothing but the truth. 
Matt Olson is insane now. I think he's become the best player on our team. He's just ridiculous. And Gary, that's not that's not leaving. Man, Grisham is fast. Oh, that's a shot from Yuli. That's going to be two. And I'm not taking Porcello out, so... Oh, that was close. 3-2 count. I should have been more trigger happy there, because he wasn't about to walk the pitcher. No, he got me with the late jammed pop-up. I finally got a swinging strike three. It was a check swing, but it counts. Oh, he turned on one. I could be wrong, but that might be the first inside sinker or fastball he's turned on. This is big, Jordan. Don't blow it. I still worry about the outfield every game. Hey, Yelich can still get a perfect. I mean, I act like he's got like 20 contact. He's still a decent hitter. Is that what I thought was happening in the last at bat? I don't, I don't think that has enough carry. Oh man, it didn't even get off the wall. Oh, yeah, I guess that is a strike, isn't it? <laughs> Story, please. Thank you, one finally stayed fair. That one feels like a big deal, too, to double our lead. Okay. He's gonna make me worry a little bit after a leadoff single, isn't he? He's got Brandon Crawford coming in off the bench. That's, that's actually kind of scary. Just put one on the ground. Well, not that hard. Oh my god. Hang on. Alright, seven speed's not gonna score, but also, uh oh. Uh, you can have your run. I'll trade it for an out at this point. That's fine. Oh, that's not what's what's supposed to happen. Alright, hey, he he's forced my hand. I was thinking I was gonna breeze to a complete game shutout with uh, Porcello, but I'm taking him out. I'm done with him. We're gonna go Deekman here. He's got Canna, who's way worse against lefties, and then two lefties. He timed that up. I'm I'm starting to get worried. Uh oh, this has me worried. Please, Eloy, be good. Thank you. Sean Doolittle. All right, that opens the door for some insurance. I would very much like another run or two after what happened last inning. Or I guess in the top of this inning, and that's not going to help. Wait, it is. How did that drop in? No. I can't be swinging at that. Take it. Wait for your pitch. And story, that one's going to stay up long enough. I can't remember the last time I wasn't able to do something off of Sean Doolittle. I feel like for me, that guy is just BP. You know, you'd think ninth inning save situation, I'd go to Chapman. But he's got a couple of big righties, so I think we're staying Deekman for, for facing McMahon. And then we'll go to Karen Chak. Oh my god, what is this guy on now? Who'd he give his controller to? He just put a perfect on a slider right on the corner. I've never seen anybody do that. Alright, technically today Bogarts is a little bit better against righties, but it's so close that I'll just play the matchup. That's not leaving. That ball is not leaving. Oh my god. I, I don't know what to say. He he was way early on that, and I knew it as soon as he swung, and it left. No. <laughs> the ace in the hole. You can't just do that to me, and I have to face him with Karen Jack. Oh my god, okay, I got away with it. He swung first pitch at a bad pitch. I can't help but feel like Olsen would have made that play, but he ran in. Not now. Not now. He's been late jamming everything this game, and now it's actually gonna give it to him. Is it dumb to stick with Karen Check? 
I just know he'd bring in some big righty. No! This is a joke! Those are not good swings! Oh, thank everything. Oh my god. I, I could not believe what was happening. Well, we won. That, that, that felt like it was way closer than it should have been. He ended up with 11 hits. How many of those came in just the last two innings? I just counted seven. Seven of his 11 hits came in the last two innings. But we pick up two wins again in one episode. That's what, the fourth time that's happened, I think? So we gotta tally it up, because I honestly don't know which game between the two is gonna end up being more. So after tallying it all up, it was actually the first game that based purely on the, st the stats from the game itself had more stubs. This game was only 8,450 and that's not including the win or like the likes or whatever parallels we get. That's just the stats. So I'll, I'll back out of this here. We'll see who we paralleled and then we'll go through that first game to see where all the stubs came from. That win moved us up to 600. All right. So Porcello gets the parallel one and then we're going to have Yelich at two, Olsen at three. Also two. I almost said Olsen at three. He's gonna be at three before we know it if he keeps playing as well as he is. All right, so here we are with the final tally. Like I said, game two was only 8,450 stubs, so game one came out on top in terms of which game made more stubs. So this is the game we're gonna count for the stats. So we had 2,000 stubs for scoring four runs, 2,500 for 10 total bases, we got 500 stubs for getting to five hits. Struck out the one time, so that's a negative 100. But then on the mound, we didn't allow any runs. So that's 3,000 stubs. Two hits allowed is good for 2,500. And then I struck him out one time in this game in two innings. So that's another 250 stubs. The self-imposed rule was the complete game and the complete game shutout only go into effect if the pitcher pitches three innings. So we didn't make it there. So those don't count. So game one, what, what I just listed off, was good for a total of 10,650 stubs. But then we take that 10,650, add that to the 700 from the seven likes, 3,000 stubs for getting two wins, so 1,500 for each win, another 1,500 for the first game being a quit, 5,000 stubs for hitting that five win streak, and then our parallels. We got one parallel one for 1,000 stubs, and then two guys up to parallel two for 2,000 stubs each. So that's another 5,000 total between the parallels. So that brings our final total of all of our stubs for this episode to 25,850. And here we are with the packs. I said in the last one that headliners just weren't getting it done. So I didn't want to buy like two or three headliners. So we only got the one and then I got a 10 pack bundle and then two additional packs. So we're here with 12 show packs, a silver topper and a set 20 headliner. That cost a total of 25,500. So that left 350. So that 350 is just going to roll on into the stub bank. And let's get to these packs. It's really, it's honestly diamonds or nothing at this point. We got Blackman. He's not a diamond. But I mean, really, e even the bullpen. There's only a few golds that would probably replace anybody in the bullpen. So yeah, I mean, at this point in the series, it is, it is really just all about the diamonds or, you know, they're getting sold for the stub bank, really. Which I guess, I don't know, I guess the further we move into this series, the more important the stub bank is going to be. That might be the, the best way we have, the best chance of actually upgrading the team after a while here. But yeah, still nothing. We get a gold jersey though. Anybody in this one? Nope. But a gold sponsorship. It was only quick sell for 100 though. Alright, halfway through the packs. Are we lucky yet? Nope. That's not even a good gold equipment. Alright, seventh pack. Another silver. You know, if we're not going to pull diamonds, we may as well at least pull a lot of silvers for the stub bank. Silvers are definitely better than... Oh, well now that's better than a silver, isn't it? We got one. It's been a while. We had a little bit of a drought, but we finally got another diamond. Who's this going to be? It's just purple. It's just purple. So who is it? 
Liam Hendricks, we add another bullpen arm, which <laughs> honestly, after after that last game, we might need. Haven't had much use for the bullpen, but when I had to turn to it in that last game, Karinchak almost blew it. So that's a good upgrade, and we still got five more packs to go. Uh, that's that's just the universe balancing itself out there and still nothing out of that one we got two more show packs another double bronze i can't really complain about being unlucky after getting a diamond can i at least we're finishing off the show packs with a gold adam frazier he's he's probably not going to get a spot anywhere but that's probably that's probably going to be the most i've ever sold a single player for the stub bank I mean, he, he alone is going for more than I made in total in last episode's opening for the stub bank. The final pack here. This was a long episode, wasn't it? Because I just looked and I've been recording for an hour and 40 minutes now. But that's what two games will do. The, the headliner in this one's Rizzo. I, I, we don't need him. We have Olsen. So I'm just hoping for those boosted diamond odds to give me somebody. We got a diamond unlockable and a gold there. Oh, 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 hang on now. Wait a second. This is, uh, well, first of all, Nelson Cruz is making our bench because look at him against lefties. Look at him against anybody. But Mr. Kyle Schwarber just went silver. He's got a secondary of catcher. Does he challenge Gary? That is the question. Do we stay loyal to Gary or do I go to Schwarber? That'll be a decision that's made not right now, because I, I will have to think about that. I am really good with Schwarber. Man, we pulled a diamond in that opening, and I'm more excited about the silver Schwarber. But that is finally going to wrap up this long episode. I wonder if it's going to end up as long as the recording took. Make sure if you guys enjoyed this video to leave a like on it. Because also each like, as we know, is worth 100 stubs towards the next episode's packs. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Getting very close to that 500 mark and I'm just itching to get there. But with that said, that is all I have for this one. Thank you guys all for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.